<laughs> All right, this is Amusement Insiders with Grace Peacock from Canada's Wonderland. And we are here today to talk to you guys about Winterfest um, and maybe a few other things depending, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> but nonetheless, we'll get it started. So Winterfest in 2019, Grace, was such a huge success at Canada's Wonderland. I don't even think uh, Cedar Fair was expecting such large numbers. Um, so we were wondering what's new for 2021? Well, uh, yeah, first of all, we are so thrilled to be back because you're right, it was a beautiful event and it was so well received. I know everyone I spoke to was just blown away. They didn't expect to see the entire park transformed. And so we're so happy to have this back and to be finishing, you know, what is a it's been a hard two years, you know, going out with 2021 with this beautiful event. It's a nice way to end the year, I think. So Winterfest this year is bigger than ever. Like literally the footprint is bigger because we've expanded our North Pole themed area of the park. So we've included in there Antique Carousel's open, uh, Swing of the Century's open. We have uh, all the food venues in that area are open and they're being sort of given a, a, a holiday spin as well. We've got a new ice wine garden in there. Um, some of the entertainments moved over, including some new entertainment, like the bar will have some new entertainment. Uh, the Tannenbaums, if you remember those characters, will have their own show over there as well. Um, plus, we have this gorgeous 100 foot long colored LED tunnel called Northern Starlight. And I'm sure you've seen these in different places, but you're just completely surrounded by beautiful lights. And it's going to be one of those places people go to take pictures of themselves. and. Um, that's going to be on the pathway between Yukon and Behemoth. So um, that's, those are the biggest changes. We're obviously also grappling with, you know, COVID protocols that we've had all year. Um, but it's the same live shows, the skating's back on the rink. Um, in a lot of cases, you've got to book things in advance. Obviously, your, your trip to the park, you're going to be reserving. Um, skating, everything has to be done online as well including your waiver before you come to the park. So make sure to get all that done. This is one of those events you have to plan ahead for because mm -hmm. there's so much going on. Uh, you need to know when the shows are happening to make sure you're in the right place, right? You don't want to miss the tree lighting ceremony. That's at 5.30 every night. So go online, check out the mobile app, plan your night and you'll have a great time. For sure. A little plug here. I saw Coaster Circuits posted on Twitter, an entire show timeline. <laughs> Uh, right. I definitely screenshot it, so definitely shout out to Coaster Circuits for that. Yeah, it's a good idea to look at those show times and just decide what it is you're going to see that night. Yeah, but I did notice on the map you guys had that too, so that's going to be helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, I guess what's your personal favorite show at Winterfest? Ah, oh, my favorite show. I love Cool Yule because it's all the, the like the pop holiday songs that you you can't help but sing along to. Um, I think that one's gotta be my favorite. Holly Jolly Trolley's a lot of fun too. And that's in a new location this year. So it's right across from Sledgehammer. Um, and it's gonna have its own little stage there with the trolley behind it. So I'm sure it's gonna look gorgeous. Um, but it's a close call between those two, I think. I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is your biggest piece of advice? I guess you kind of touched on it a little bit near the end of the first question, but what's your biggest piece of advice for someone who has never been to Winterfest before? Yeah, the, the planning piece for sure. Um, because it, it just, I, it makes me very sad to ever hear somebody's come to the park, they've walked through the whole place and they've missed all the shows because they didn't know that there were show times and they had to be in a certain place. And the park's huge, right? So. It takes a long time to get from one side to the other, and if you're not planning for that, plus we have so many other different activities, like if you're doing skating, if you're doing cookies with Mrs. Claus, uh, the letter writing at the North Pole, seeing Santa, like, that fills up your night right there. Um, so aside from planning, I'm sure I know a lot of the audience, they're already season pass holders, but um, that, that gold pass value is huge because you can't fit it all in in one night. Uh, it's great to have the freedom to come back and do all the other stuff you didn't get to the first time. Of course. Yeah. All right. So we saw online that Canada's Wonderland posted a vaccine mandate for the park. That's right. Um, to allow themselves to have higher capacity and other reasons as well, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of questions we're getting online is, would a negative test work to get in as an uh, alternative? Right. Right now we're following um, the guidance by, uh, provided by York Region Public Health, which is our local area here, and they do not permit the negative tests in replace of the um, proof of vaccine. So at this time we're not. Okay. And then a uh, second question is uh, anyone under the age of 16 for photo ID? 
is you don't, you don't need photo ID. Oh, okay, perfect. It's government issued with your birth date on it, so a health card or um, birth certificate. Um, the if you go on the government websites, uh, York Region has it too. There's a list of all the different um, acceptable IDs. And we follow closely with York Region Public Health, as I mentioned. So if you have any questions about that, I just, just I'd see what they have listed as acceptable. Awesome. All right, that answers one of our most uh, popular questions there. So what goes into transforming Canada's Wonderland from Halloween haunt into Winterfest in 12 days? <laughs> A lot, so much. I don't even think we have enough time to talk about it. Um, the other departments right now, kudos to them. They're working around the clock. There are some people here that I, I don't see their cars leave the park. Um, because there's just so much to, to have happen. Um, obviously all the Halloween decor had to get out and we brought in all of the, um, you know, the lights for the trees, much, much of which was already on, um, but there were, there's a new area to build out, so those trees have to have lights put on. Um, all the different installations, if you recall, you know, the big photo ops, like the big Christmas present box, uh, we have giant ornament balls, those are all being put out. You know, like our, our reindeers up here and our toy soldiers. Uh, the skating rink needed to be built and it's up. It's, it's, I think it's, if it's not already frozen, it's well on its way to be. I just saw it the other day and it looked like it was, it was a hot day though, so it might have been just a little melty, but um, that itself, uh, hiring is still happening. Um, so we have to hire for, you know, entertainment across all the departments, really, foods, security. Um, and that's really been the case all year. So if anybody's looking for a job, check the website. There's probably still some opportunities. And what else? Um, you know, in my department, the, the marketing that's happening, promotions, getting awareness out. Because mm -hmm. this, this event runs longer than it did in 2019. So we're starting opening this weekend. Runs select dates until December 31st. But people aren't really thinking holidays yet, right? So we're trying to get awareness out and get it on people's minds that, hey, we're open this weekend and you can come enjoy this event. Um, but it's really the, the heavy lifting that's happening with park decor. Oh, and all the rehearsals uh, for entertainment. So we've had vocal rehearsals, dance rehearsals. I saw the tree lighting ceremony crew um, out the other day. You might have seen it on the TikTok. Your TikTok, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's just a flurry of activity. And as you mentioned, it's only 12 days. Yeah. So it's a, a small miracle uh, that they're pulling off here, but we always do it. And it's going to be great. And everyone's excited for the opening. Yeah, it's crazy. Wonderland always happens to like pull it off. Like last second, it looks like it's not going to be done, but it's, yeah. it gets done. We're going to get there. <laughs> um, another question I have is what goes into deciding which rides can open for Winterfest and which ones can't? Oh, that may be a little out of my area, <laughs> but I do know generally, I mean, it, it's, it's about um, the weather and we have to be ready for the coldest of days, even though, you know, this week's been pretty warm. Um, and I know some people are like, why aren't the coasters open? Well, <laughs> we have to also plan for staff to run those rides, right? So if we know we're not going to be able to commit to having a live and running, we're not going to bother hiring for that ride and training for it. So um, it's really the rides that can run in inclement weather, the kind of weather that you get in December. Um, that's the biggest piece, so far as I am aware. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so this one might be a tough question. Um, so with Canada's Wonderland success in Winterfest and Cedar Fair kind of looking to expand the season at other parks, is there talks for Canada's Wonderland to potentially expand Winterfest into January like Carowinds? Um, it's, always, it's always a possibility. I'll leave it at that, I think. Um, I know even when we um, opened for 2019, we had a lot of feedback from guests because kids are out for school for another additional week, right? Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of guests were asking, or you know, can you just stay open for an extra week because if we've got our kids at home and we don't have anything to do with them and it would be great to be able to come. So we're aware of that. Um, nothing's been decided or concrete, um, but as you all as you know, when things happen at different parks across the chain, um, there's always a possibility for the Awesome, good answer. <laughs> I'm great at dancing around. <laughs> dancing around dancing. Not many people know this, but Canada's Wonderland operates like a mini city in there. In fact, you might even be able to pick it up on the mics behind us. But Wonderland does a lot of their own fiberglass and woodwork for events like Halloween Haunt, Winterfest, and sign design uh, for their rides and attractions. We were wondering if you could provide any like information uh, or context on what goes into that. Uh, I don't have any like stats or anything like that, but I know that yeah we have um, a huge workshop um, in the back um, on behind the 
behind this wild beast. Um, where, yeah, exactly, we have a fiberglass shop. So, um, not these guys are our toy soldiers here, but, um, you know, a good example, you know the Snoopy that's on top of the Rainbow Bridge mm -hmm. for Winterfest? He's on his little sleigh. That was created here, that was built here. Anything Peanuts related that's fiberglass is built by us. Um, you know, we get designs and work closely with um, the Peanuts licensing company. Um, but all that's built here as well. And all of the signage that you see on the stores, um, that's here as well. And that's a huge job for Winterfest because we're switching out everything. Like all the stores have new names. Uh, our food venues this year, um, there's more with new names as well. And um, all that work is happening on site. Um, and it's great. It's really great to have that resource. And we've got a talented team of people um, doing these designs and building these things. It's, um, like you said, it's like we have our own city and it's great to be able to rely on your own resources here um, because you can do things much more effectively and um, efficiently, especially when you have 12 yeah. days to get ready for something. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, a little personal question. Um, Windseeker. Uh, a lot of the other parks decorate their Windseeker like an LED Christmas tree. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, we were wondering, you may not know this because it's such a small little item, but we were wondering if Win uh, Windseeker would ever be chosen to be a LED Christmas tree here at Canada's Wonderland. I have no idea. Okay, it's not I figured. Here, obviously, <laughs> um, but it, like I said, it's always a possibility if it's something that's happening at another park, right? Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to ask me about my ride on Winter Swing. Oh! How stressed out it was when I went on that. <laughs> Well, that too. <laughs> I ended up going on that again at night. Really? Haunt, because we had to do some online filming uh, with the mounts and stuff. So I did that and I was terrified again. I don't even know. I think that's it. <laughs> but that... yeah, for Christmas, I don't know about that for sure. Okay, awesome. So earlier, uh, before Halloween Haunt, you posted a really creative post that got the internet in a whirl about Flight Deck. Um, it was with the carefully, not so carefully placed, I think it's placed there every year that way. <laughs> But you made a little TikTok about Flight Deck and you know, post a little image and everyone went a, a stir. So we were wondering if you wanted to provide any more context to that. Uh, um, you know what? I, um, I love the support and the engagement of the, you know, the, the park fans and the enthusiasts and it's great. And I guess I owe everyone a little apology because <laughs> that was in complete innocence. I was, it was one of our, we were looking through haunts uh, before it had opened and I saw that and just thought it just the positioning was great I was like it's got a coaster in the background didn't even think flight deck <laughs> took the picture and shared it and made the joke about who put this here and then yeah it just took off so kudos to everybody for being so engaged and interested <laughs> I didn't mean it um, I don't have any definitive plans or information about flight deck leaving anytime yeah. soon and I uh, don't necessarily promise I won't do that again but uh, <laughs> I do apologize Oh, it was awesome, especially your follow-up one where it was like, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> yeah, I just, I like to have fun. If anybody knows me, I like to have some fun and uh, I hope everybody, you know, if you can engage with that, you're not doing things <laughs> Of course. Um, all right, so new food options. It's a little early. I don't think you've announced everything, so I'm not sure you'll be able to speak too much on it, but um, is there any new food options that you could uh, go into a little bit? Oh, um, we are planning, I believe, to release our Winterfest menu next week. So I would stay tuned for the specifics on that. As you know, we always have like a festive, a uh, couple festive funnel cakes. Um, I am excited about, <laughs> I'm excited about the alcoholic options. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm a mom and whatever. Uh, I, whenever I'm here with my kids, I can use a drink. Um, Anyway, because we have so many different bars, the Ice Wine Garden is going to be gorgeous. Um, we have a um, the anniversary store. It's going to be converted into the Jingle Bar, and they're going to have fun little uh, holiday cocktails and things. Um, yeah, that's on the map. That was out today. I was, I was like, isn't that St. Pick, St. Nick's? <laughs> no, that's moved. Really? That is now at Crystal Arcade. Oh, okay, a bigger. Oh, wow. Yeah, we moved some things around in there. So take a look, but uh, we're going to have the Jingle Bar, Ice Wine Garden, I believe there's another um, outdoor bar, bar in um, Medfair or the Elf Village called uh, the Naughty Elf, and then another one up in Frontier Canada um, where we had the entertainment on. And, um, but 
there's a whole array of fun things. And then there's a milk and cookies venue that's going to be in Medfair Elf Village. I know we have new names for everything. <laughs> um, milk and cookies is the Dairy Queen location that's there. And they're going to have um, cookie witches, holiday cookie witches. And these, I believe these little um, cookie shots. So it's like a little shot glass with like a cookie on top. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Plus the, the apple cider, hot cider, mm -hmm. the mulled wine yeah. I always love, and the kids' hot chocolate for the kids all over the place. We'll have lots of hot chocolate locations. Um, as to the rest of the menu, I would wait to find out next week. Okay. Because I don't trust my memory to be able to remind them right now. <laughs> um, I think we have one more future speculation type question, okay. but I think this is definitely going to be a no-go. But we'll, we'll, we'll put our feet in the water. Um, as we arrived here today, uh, they started chopping down some of the poles uh, in the front gate area, right over there. Oh. And we, <laughs> we were wondering with, uh, over the past couple years, like before 2020, uh, we noticed, you know, the front gate's getting a little more incapable of handling the crowds. We were wondering if there was any future plans for implementing an upgrade or just implementing new things at front gate. Yeah, I, I couldn't speak to that. I, I'm not aware of plans. Um, I know that it's been a different experience here in the past uh, in the past year. Um, you know, the physical distancing and you know, the checks of the gate taking longer. Um, but yeah, no, in terms of anything else, the, the facade here, I'm not aware. Okay. It's yeah. awesome. Thought we would just. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, on some conference calls, we've heard like rumblings that not all 2022 attractions may be announced um, for all the parks. Um, we were wondering if maybe Canada's Wonderland was one of those parks that has unannounced items for 2022. I'll tell you at this time, there is not. We, okay. we, we released our announcement in August, as we always do. So we have the big new restaurant coming. Um, and then we also have the International Food Festival, which is gonna be huge. So those are our two big pieces for 2022. Awesome, and then I guess on that topic, uh, is there any updates about the restaurant? Um, any further announcements on the restaurant at all? Yeah, I think that's, that's it may wait until after Winterfest is done before we release the renderings and things. Um, there's a few details that are still being confirmed, so we're just not ready to put that out the door yet. Um, but it is going to be gorgeous, and I think everybody's going to be excited. I mean, I know people say, oh, I'd rather have a ride, but you know what? I think restaurants, food venues, they're needed just as much mm -hmm. to help improve the guest experience. Um, and we're really excited about this one because it's big and it's beautiful, and, um, and it's really going to fit the Canadian aesthetic that we have going here at the park. Awesome. I'm, I look forward to it. Infrastructure is important to a theme park, so. <laughs> All right, so we saw a couple of two indoor attractions for Winterfest disappear off the map and off the attractions list. So Tinker's Toy Factory and the little candy cane maze um, over in Planet Snoopy. So we were wondering if that was just because of COVID um, and hopefully we'll see Tinker's Toy Factory return in 2022, of course, according to things going on. Yeah, yeah it, it was exactly because of COVID protocols. Um, with a production like Tinker's, um, we work with the um, Haute Vol, which is out of uh, Montreal, and um, to put a production together like that, we require you know contracts to be signed and agreed to, and work to happen well in advance. And with COVID protocols and um, adapting to this, this current norm, it's been very difficult to work far in advance of anything, right? So um, we had to make a call on that, and unfortunately we couldn't have it this year. Um, but it was a huge success in 2019. People loved it. And yeah, I think uh, you know the intent is for that to return. Um, same situation with um, Candy Cane Castle, um, with it being an indoor attraction. At the time that we needed to commit, we mm -hmm. couldn't. So yeah, unfortunately, it's out. But we have more outdoor space than usual, so um, lots more to explore over in the North Pole section, which is actually ironically on the south side of the park. <laughs> but we'll just skip over that. Um, I think people still have a lot of fun. I'm excited. I'll be here Saturday and Sunday. Um, so obviously go get vaccinated so you can come. Uh, we went over the vaccine policies, everything that's new for 2021 at Winterfest, and it sounds amazing. Obviously I'm a huge fan and I preach it way too much, yeah. but that's okay. No, it's, it's not possible to love it too much. <laughs> All right. Well, here's to 2021 Winterfest. See you guys at the park.